Mwah! My beautiful, 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 fantastic, fantastic, handsome, handsome. Hmm, which other word? Great, 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 wonderful, fan, fantabulous, splendiferous, splendocious, epic. Uh, what other word can I describe my beautiful people? Just an amazing set of people. Love you loads. My beautiful people, how are you? I hope that each and every one of you are okay. And if you're not, trust me, there is a God who sits high, he looks low, and he's concerned about you. You know, just talk to him, real people. Just open up yourselves to him. Be honest with him about yourself. Be the good parts, even the bad parts. I know sometimes it's very difficult. One of the reasons why I think people hold on to pride, it is because you don't like to face the negative side of yourself. But you know, that's that's one of the major ways of being healed. The Bible says it tonight, it says, confess your sins. Not to one another, not that section, but as I said, the confess your sins to God, really. Because when you become vulnerable with God, you've now opened up that can of worms, allow them to come out so that God can clear that manhole, that section there that needs to be cleared. But when you hoard it and hold it inside of yourselves, although he knows, you know, he wants you to build that relationship and that communication and to trust him, you know, and, and for him to really work on you and to make you a better human being. That's what I do, you know, I put every fault. Sometimes when I pour to him, I say, Jesus, Lord, I feel so ashamed to know that this is how I am. I feel so bad, God, but God, you say, I must be truthful and open and honest, and that's the only way I can be healed. And I found that he has not shown me. I can't explain it to you how I know he has not shown me. Like, you know, like you feel like he's just going to get this horrible feeling will come over you and you know like you feel this beating stick over your head but actually no you know sometimes you feel almost like he just reaches out to you and hug you no matter how you say boy god you know i thought of doing this that and that or some bad thing or your thoughts were just not good or you know you have some bad habits and you know you're just and i put them before him people i say god even those that i may not even be thinking of now you know and i say show me me so that I can put it before you and ask you to just work on me daily. I kid you not, people. Do it. It works. You know? And I, I personally believe that God's, God loves when we are very open, honest, and vulnerable. You know? Even think about your relationships with people. You know? As much as people like to hear niceties, there is something after a while when your mind thinks and reminisces. When somebody is honest and open about themselves with you, you, you have more respect for them. Think about it. That when somebody is deceitful and disingenuous, fake or false, you don't, you don't really like it. Think about it. Just sit down, meditate on what I'm saying to you. So, you know, people, I'm, I'm telling of my journey in reading the entire Bible. Um, I'm now in 1 Corinthians. I'm almost completed. I can think there are 16 or so chapters in there. I'm at chapter 14. But when I read chapter 12, chapter 12 is a chapter that I would encourage every human being to read, especially from verses 7 to 31. That is from 7 to the end of 1 Corinthians chapter 12, um, in particular verses 7 to 21. I'm going to paraphrase really what it is talking about and uh, so that you guys can understand it from the perspective that I want to bring it. You guys have heard it in so many different ways, even more wise ways than I'm even going to bring to the fore. I pray that God will just give me the the unction, the wisdom, knowledge, everything, you know, to say to you that can help somebody. And I'm going to tie it in with envy and jealousy, you know, in the sense that we don't have to be like that. Now, the entire most of that entire chapter really speaks about the different gifts that God has given each and every one of us. And he even likened it unto the body. And, you know, it was saying that some will have the gift of prophecy. Some will have the gift of miracles, of healing, you know. And um, some will have different gifts. Whatever the gifts may be for the building up of God, God's kingdom. All of them work together hand in hand. For the, for the common good, really is to build up God's kingdom, to worship him, to serve him in spirit and in truth, to get his message out there so that those who are sick can be healed, those who are lost can be saved, right? And he was saying that the foot, if the foot were say, boy, because I'm not the hand, I'm, I have no use on this body because the foot is thinking, boy, when I see the hand, what the hand does, you know, boy, I can't do it, so it, I, I serve no purpose. But while, he, while the foot is saying that, the hand is saying, why what I see that foot do and the foot can't take up itself and walk from here to Timbuktu 
I wish I could do that, but I couldn't do that. Because can you imagine the body being on the hand, you're trying to walk on your hand. You ever see some people walk on there, they can only go about a few seconds and then have to come back down because of the weight of the body can't manage it and you being upside down and all of that as well. And the, the hand is so amazed by the foot and the foot is amazed by the hand or the hand can swing and do all of this and write and gesticulate and do under fingers on it and doing all kinds of things with it with itself you know and likewise the eye the eye is saying my god look at the lips the lips can actually along with the tongue make sounds come out of it and sing beautifully speak beautifully snore uh not so beautifully <laughs> and all of that i make all these wonderful sounds while it is saying that the lips and the tongues and the teeth obviously they're saying wow the eyes can actually see what's going on across the world oh my god what a beautiful gift you know it can actually see and you know we you, they, they, it has the ability to see what's going on in this life the nose is 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 now there and the nose is saying wow look at the eyes they can see what's happening all over the world you know the lips can bring out and with the tongue and the teeth obviously can bring out and you know the sounds that sound so beautifully you know and all of these things and the lips and the eyes are saying wow the nose can actually smell the wonderful smells up cross you know the world it's not so good smells as well you know the awful smell but it has the ability to smell you know to know when something can probably taste good or not taste good or whatever because it smells it first before it hits the tongue or it hits the mouth you know and um the ears they are saying what you know saying wow i'm so amazed by the mouth that can speak and taste and bring out those beautiful sounds through singing or through speaking and the nose that can smell the different wonderful fragrances and even the not so wonderful fragrances and the eyes can see what is going on and yet the eyes the nose and the mouth is saying wow the ears can actually hear what's going on they can hear the different words and the, th the different things that people are saying and the different music that is playing you know it's hearing all of that do you see how important each and every part of the body is so while the next part of the body is is, is almost like it is complaining or, or 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 saying boy i feel so downtrodden because it can't for the hand it can't walk for the for the eye it can't speak for the nose it can't hear for the ears it can't smell right for the, the mouth it can't see for the for the for the foot it can't swing its hand and write and conduct a musical um orchestra you know and all of these things the bottom is saying boy the the foot look how it shapes nicely and, and, the, and the foot is saying wow what a sexy butt you know all of these things do you see and yet we can sit on our butt butts because of how it is cushioned and how it is made the tissues in it you know is able to sit somewhere even if the thing is very tough can you imagine if the, the the thigh or the other section of your foot you know was to sit on something as long as the bottom it would be painful in a matter of seconds because of the bone structure there and i'm saying god is calculating in a good way he made sure the eyes see that's a powerful strength. The nose can smell that's a powerful strength. Because think about it, people. You don't want to lose any part of the body. No part. You don't want to lose any part because they all are significant, basically equally. You don't want to go without your eyes. You don't want to go without your nose. You don't want to go without your mouth, your tongue, your teeth, your ears, your hands, your feet, your bottom. And other sections of your body you don't want to go without it if you want to take it internally you know the lungs is important although it is made of hard muscle you don't want to go without that you can't go without your heart you can't go without your kidneys you know maybe you can't go without you can probably live on a part of it but you can't go without it entirely you know what i'm saying you can't go without your liver and the different you know the esophagus the different sections in your body that the, the body needs your blood people we don't need to be envious if you're a lawyer you're you know many people wish i could even just even take up a book and study law so even if you're not the the so-called brightest of brightest the qc and the top this are the johnny cochrans you're a lawyer 
you're significant to somebody to, to somebody you're the better Johnny Cochran than the real Johnny Cochran if he was alive may God rest his soul you don't have to envy somebody who is a medical doctor to say boy look when can he you know do surgery and save lives but you can save somebody's life in a sense you can save somebody's life from going to prison or from them losing how much money or them house or their car or whatever the situation may be the medical doctor probably is while you're envying the medical doctor like that medical doctor is envying you and say boy look him can hug him case and save this person from going to prison and whatnot and say so you are saying something that the doctor is probably saying you are significant just as how the medical doctor and the actuary is significant as singers we don't need to envy the next singer. They may be better in, in a particular genre than you are. And that's fine. They're listening and I say, boy, look how that, I love how that person handles this particular genre. I wish I could handle that particular genre good. Like you have the opera singers, the classical singers, the R&B singers, the gospel-oriented singers, the reggae singers and all of that. We all work in tandem for the greater good. We don't have to envy anybody, people. We do not have to envy anybody. Read 1 Corinthians 12 from 7 to 31. And you realize, oh my God, it is, it's true that we don't have to envy anybody. Because what you're doing, instead of your, you magnifying your strengths, you magnify your weakness and lessen your strengths. Magnify your strengths. Look at how, you know, you can use your gift to touch somebody. I was listening to Joel Austin. I listen to him every month. I hear people say this and that. But I tell people, don't listen to him in portions. or part. He's, If he's dealing with love, he's going to speak on love. If he's dealing with obedience, he's going to speak on it. You know, and I find him to be a humorous guy. You know, he's trying to be, you know, and he will tell him he didn't go to theology school. He didn't go to seminary. So I'm trying him best. You know, probably what some of his fathers and other, his fathers and other preachers who are good, you know, solid in terms of theology and, you know, the word of God. And he tries to improve you follow me and he said something he said you know he never dreamed that he would have become a pastor because for 17 years he was helping his father in the background you know doing the technical part of it and he was comfortable there was okay there you know he was just trying to make his father look good big up the ministry of his father and you know he watched it grow grow and grow and it grew it grew over the years and then suddenly the father died and he just felt that unction because the father was trying to get him for years because maybe the father saw him although he was more laid back the father saw something in him, maybe his humorous side or something about him that could just do well. May not be a fiery preacher like the father, you know, but he saw something and he, he said for years the father tried to get him, but he was just shy. Now he's there and he and you, he's probably watched much more than how his father was watched. His father's a fiery preacher, you know, and he has probably created behavior changes and life change transformation in the lives of many, maybe that more than what his father has done. As great as his father was as a preacher. And he said, you know, he used to feel intimidated by persons who were strong voice and, you know, bold preachers and very vociferous and, you know, um, extroverted. And he's more introverted on the, on the quiet side. You know, that's his natural personality. But yet, different millions of persons he has reached. He was just able to accept his own giftings and his own strengths. And ask God, to, I guess he asks God every day to help him to be better and better and for people to be moved and impacted by him. People, we don't need to envy anybody. We don't need to be jealous of anybody. When you feel those feelings, say, God, ask God to remove it. I do that. When they come up, I say, no, it's not right. God, take it away. I'm not gonna, it's not, it's, it's something that I detest. So I don't even want, when I feel it knocking on my door, I'm not opening the door to it. You know? And what I, I remember reading something from, um... Uh, that man uh, that is great on leadership um soon tell his name john c maxwell john john c maxwell because there's a john maxwell in jamaica i think he, did he die i don't want to call death on somebody if they're alive but anyhow um john c maxwell and he said when he feels the pangs of um jealousy or envy coming up or creeping up what he does he pays a compliment you know he 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 what he does he overpowers it with paying the person a compliment or saying something positive about the individual just doing something good so he goes the opposite direction you know so it comes from the left field in as it regards the jealousy or the envy that creeps up because he's not gonna feed it you don't have to feed it it will the enemy will come in because he wants to sink you know so he'll bring it to, but you don't have to open the door to it you don't you 
every single human being is important and you have gifts that i don't have i have gifts that you don't have but it all works together for good all of us cannot be the same can you imagine if all of us did sing the same way or dance the same way or act the same way or have the same that's a boy is there any more to life then a desa boy would have, would have really be discouraged because we wouldn't see anything different and also you can look at it as if somebody if, uh, of, uh, uh, if both of you are in the same profession look to see how each other can lift the other to become better each of person each person can become better that's all you need to do but we don't need to envy nobody no matter what no matter what even if it is like i say a just cause let us say it's something that's just seemingly unjust like we keep people just prospering while good no matter how they toil and still don't envy just say, God, you know what? You know best. And let me just give thanks for where I'm at and the things that I have. Because it could have been worse. My beautiful people, we don't need to envy anybody. We don't need to envy. We don't need to envy. We do not need to envy. We can celebrate and salute each other and strengthen each other. All right? Remember, read 1 Corinthians 12, especially from verses 7 to 31. And you will see what I'm saying. We all are, look at my eyes, significant, I need them, I need my nose, I need my mouth, I need my hands, I need my ears, me need, I don't want to lose none of them, me don't want to lose, not one of them, I don't want to lose, me don't want to lose none, me I tell you that, everything I want, all like, me love it, whether I shape good or I shape good, thank God me have my full body, me love it, there are those who there who do not have their full body, and it breaks their hearts, all right? So give God thanks, people. We are all significant. Whether you're at stage one or stage 100. With 100 being the highest. It doesn't matter. You, what you have is significant. All right, my beautiful people. Love and do loads. All right, enjoy the rest of your day. Mwah! Stay good, walk good. And may God bless you all richly.